Eric, let's talk about this Bloomberg COVID resilience ranking. It compares 53 economies and comparing their quote unquote success at containing the virus with the least amount of social and economic disruption. Uh, the U.S. is now ranked number one by Bloomberg, followed by New Zealand, Switzerland, Israel, France, Spain, Australia, and China. Uh, countries like Singapore rank the 13th. First of all, what is your overall sense of this ranking? Thank you for having me. I think this ranking is very, very much um, giving extra weight to countries that have minimal uh, restrictions as opposed to countries that have most successfully contained the virus and most successfully allowed people to live their lives after they've contained the virus. And in certain ways, we see that countries that took the most strict measures with border quarantines have contained the virus the most, like China, New Zealand, Australia. And we have you know, soccer games and uh, music festivals in those countries without any mitigations. I would say that allows the most uh, social freedoms and least disruptions for society. But uh, countries that implemented those zero COVID things are penalized in this index. So in many ways, this index is, I would say it's not the fairest and it doesn't actually measure the ultimate success measure of freedom of movement with low cases combined. And that's why in, in certain ways, uh, you know, China ranks unfortunately uh, much lower and Singapore ranks much lower than it should. Let's talk about this report specifically. Um, the final resilience score is the average of um, you know, a place's performance across 12 indicators uh, equally weighted. For example, lockdown severity, flight capacity, vaccinated travel route, uh, that is how convenient uh, it is for people who are quarantined to travel internationally. Um, they are equally important as positive test result, case count, and death count. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Well, I think that th those measures are not all the same. They should not be equally weighted and many of them should not be in the same index because um, the resiliency index, that's a very vague word. I think what should matter is not just these different measures, but how successful were they? How successful were they in containing the virus? But the problem is this index doesn't give that exact weight. And so I would pr uh, prefer an alternative index based on actually containing the virus, suppressing any increase as quickly as possible, and the relative success of keeping schools open, uh, of major stadiums and sporting games open without having increases. And if you reweight it in that way, I think uh, other countries in Asia will have performed much, much better. Because right now, US may be ranking number one, but US is having uh, surging cases, doubling of cases in the last two weeks, rising hospitalizations, and even rising deaths right now. And I would not say U.S. has contained this or been resilient in cont containing this right now whatsoever. Yeah, in measuring lockdown uh, successes, uh, Bloomberg Index said uh, lockdown severity is important. And if people are experiencing greater disruption to their lives, that will result in a lower score and therefore a lower ranking. Uh, but in Asian philosophy, people say acute pain is perhaps better than chronic suffering. Uh, many would argue that yes, there was this stringent citywide or even nationwide lockdown in China uh, in the first place. Uh, but soon enough, China opened, reopened, and people went about their daily routine as uh, back in the old days. How do you look at this you know, lockdown severity measure that was indicated by Bloomberg? Yeah, I believe in, in a, uh, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure and short-term pain uh, is much uh, better for long-term gain. And, and the Bloomberg index currently penalizes you for having a very, very fast and severe uh, mitigation measures in the short term, but doesn't give a benefit to the uh, positive outcomes that comes with uh, the zero COVID approach. And I think that is very wrong. I think rewarding countries that have the political leadership forethought and the willpower to have a stringent quick containment so that its population can lead a more prosperous and 
uh, economically productive life and afterwards is what should be rewarded. And the index does not reward that, unfortunately. 